Hello, I'm Pat Donnelly with AOCS. Welcome to the AOCS business meeting and the close of this year's annual meeting expo. I'm so sorry we weren't able to get together in person this year, but I sincerely hope that you enjoyed and, and found value in the meeting. I have to admit, this year's conference was quite a challenge. You know, we've never done a live event on this scale before, but we did it. This was only possible because of the efforts of so many people uh, in our AOCS family. It really began in September 2020. You know, the governing board had the foresight to know that the physical meeting in May of 2021 wasn't going to be possible and had the courage to make that decision. This gave us a long enough runway to make a pivot. Had that decision been delayed or if we took a, a wait and see approach, um, we would have had a very different meeting. The program committee under the leadership of Rick Thiner uh, stepped up and, and met monthly to shape the structure of this meeting and find the session chairs who put the meat on the bones and then went out and found terrific speakers for us. Now, of course, our session chairs and our speakers had to endure some pretty odd hours over the last two weeks to deliver that content, uh, often well into the evening and sometimes in the middle of the night. Several of the sessions that I was on, we had speakers and session chairs uh, who were um, with us at one, two, and three o'clock in the morning. Our sponsors and exhibitors are also important members of our family. And not only do they provide practical solutions to the industry problems, but they provide much needed financial support. Uh, the truth is virtual meetings are really expensive. And last but not least, I have to thank all the AOCS staff for their extraordinary me methods or efforts on this. Um, you know, th there's no roadmap uh, for how to put together a virtual meeting. They had to figure it all out. Um, you know, they, they were truly building the plane while trying to fly it. Staff put in long hours and towards sleepless nights and spent time away from their family and children. So I really want to thank them for everything they've done. You know, AOCS is a family, and it was really great to see everyone come together to support that family. It's, it's one of the things that makes AOCS so special. For those of you who have been around for a while, I, I think you know what I'm talking about. And for those new to AOCS, well, welcome to the family. I, I think you're going to like it here. Now, in a moment, we're going to bring out the head of the family, AOCS President Doug Bebus of Lipid Technologies. Now, Doug's been a member of AOCS since 1994 and was elected to the governing board in 2012. And since that time, he has served uh, in roles as the uh, at-large member, the treasurer, the vice president, and in April 2020, assumed the role of president right at the beginning of the pandemic when everything changed. Now, over the years, Doug's incredibly thoughtful, rational, calm approach has served the society really well, but never was that more important than over the last year. On a personal note, Doug, I'd like to thank you for being such a great role model, a mentor, and a friend. Uh, we'd now like to share this short video with you. Doug Bevis has made a profound contribution to AOCS and to the broader scientific community through his many research discoveries, his mentorship, and his leadership. We would like to recognize the impact of his tenure as AOCS president during a uniquely challenging time and to thank him for his continuing service. Dr. Bevis has served as a research scientist at the University of Minnesota for more than 20 years. He is the director of the Holman Center for Lipid Research and president of Lipid Technologies. His research is focused on the role of essential fatty acids in human and animal nutrition. Continuing the work initiated by Dr. Ralph T. Holman, Dr. Bebus is revealing the role of omega-3 fatty acids in the downregulation of the inflammatory response and the potential for using fatty acids nutritionally in the treatment of depression, schizophrenia, and Tourette's syndrome. His work is inspiring new treatments for inflammation-related diseases such as Crohn's disease, heart disease, and arthritis. 
The blood spot test, developed by Lipid Technologies, is the gold standard for omega-3 analysis. His research has been published in numerous papers and patents. He is a two-time winner of the American Chemical Society's Award in Analytical Chemistry and an active participant in the International Society for the Study of Fatty Acids and Lipids. Dr. Bebus joined the AOCS family as a student in 1994 and soon stepped up to take leadership roles in the Education and Conference Administration Committee and in the Health and Nutrition Division. He has served on the AOCS Foundation and the AOCS Governing Board for several years, making an important impact in both. As AOCS president, he masterfully orchestrated the society's response to COVID-19. His swift actions ensured we were prepared to receive financial support from the U.S. government. His leadership smoothed the transition from physical to online meetings so our community could continue to share their research. Our online annual meeting, our Plant Protein Science and Technology Forum, the co-hosted Soybean 360 event, and numerous webinars and mixers introduced AOCS to more than 2,000 new scientists and professionals from around the world. Dr. Bebus brings people together. He is committed to supporting our student members and recognizing researchers at all levels through the AOCS Awards Program. Under his tenure as president, AOCS built partnerships across the globe with groups such as Cultivating New Frontiers in Agriculture, the Feed the Future Soybean Innovation Lab, and the International Society for the Study of Fatty Acids and Lipids. He introduced AOCS to the Global Organization for EPA and DHA Omega-3s and developed a partnership with their technical committee. He has worked on technical guidance to help reduce industrial trans fatty acids in food products in developing countries. These actions and connections benefit us all. The AOCS staff particularly appreciates the apples from his orchard and his numerous small acts of kindness. The AOCS family is grateful for his leadership and inspiration as our president over this last year. It has been a challenging time and Doug has stepped up to that challenge. His practical approach and sense of humor and his embrace of online technologies and the potential they bring for our society have helped us to weather the COVID-19 pandemic storm and emerge much stronger. Thank you, Dr. Beavis. Thank you all for being here uh, for our annual meeting um, uh, in the virtual format. Uh, it was a really exciting past 10 days for me, uh, seeing a lot of colleagues and seeing presentations from all over the world. So uh, we're going to recap uh, the business of the year today, and, and certainly the past 15 months were, were very interesting. Um, as Pat said, uh, you know, staff of the OCS really came forward uh, and was is very reactive to, to uh, get us through the year. So. Uh, in, as such, the pandemic has really reshaped the world as we know it and live in on personal and professional levels. Uh, as each country grapples with the pandemic, AOCS members can and should be proud to belong to a tradition of scientific societies that helps make the world and populations better through innovation. Uh, so I just, again, want to reiterate my support for your, um, your ongoing support. So uh, we're going to open our first slides here and then... Uh, the governing board, this is a, a picture of a Zoom meeting for a governing board. Uh, the governing board last met face-to-face -face on March 10th, 2020. We've been meeting virtually ever since. Although we're unable to execute all of our pre-pandemic plans uh, in the past year, a great deal was accomplished. And we're going to go through a few of those highlights for you. Uh, we successfully executed our first virtual annual meeting last summer. Um, our meeting obviously was canceled and not knowing what to expect, our primary objective was to support presenters who had planned to previously speak in Montreal with the opportunity to share their research. While only about half the original scheduled speakers opted to present, present virtually, we attracted over 3,000 attendees uh, from 81 different countries, more than twice the number that we typically have attending uh, our physical meetings. So it was uh, really a great success and taught us about the uh, potential impact that virtual meetings could have. Beyond that, in October, we were successfully able to convert the entire 2020 plant protein science 
in technology format into um, meeting into a virtual format. Uh, again, another very successful meeting. And in December, working with the University of Illinois and the Soybean Innovation Lab, we hosted Soybean 360, uh, Agro Processing in Sub-Sahara Africa, our third virtual conference of 2020. Old pros. Collectively, these, these three conferences uh, introduced AOCS to almost 2,000 new people. So um, our mission of expanding and, and reaching out to people was really fulfilled with this uh, new approach to having meetings. And we uh, had 41 webinars, five midweek mixers, and 10 award lectures throughout the year. So more interactions. Um, our annual meeting uh, had 526 live presentations, 65 e-posters, and 1,241 attendees. So uh, a real success um, this past two weeks. So we had 19 mixers with over 570 participants. In addition, uh, we co-hosted uh, the annual meeting of the International Society for the Study of Fatty Acids and Lipids, or the ISFAL group, and uh, they had 53 live presentations, 136 e-posters, and 238 attendees. So we we're very happy to work with this fall uh, again. Uh, in our membership trends uh, over the past five years, we'll have that data soon for you. Um, the, the trend is um, slightly decreasing as a lot of professional societies have. So, and we lost a few more uh, during the pandemic, but I would really personally encourage you to reach out to your colleagues uh, who you think would be a good fit for our organization and just ask them to join. So uh, we really are a family and, uh, and there's so much benefit from a AOCS membership that many of you know. So, and if we look at our, our financials for the year end, uh, December 31st, um, you can see revenues uh, on the up, uh, top side, publications, education, technical services, membership, uh, and investment income. So AOCS is lucky that it has multiple lines of revenue. Uh, so our lack of a, of a uh, annual meeting, which really hit us with about a million dollar loss, um, is, is somewhat balanced by the other anchors of AOCS. And uh, we ended the year with a reduction in net assets of only $38,000. So that was um, really um, successful uh, compared to a projected uh, downturn of, of several hundred thousand dollars. And that equates to about 0.7% of our actual assets. So AOCS has about $5.3 million in assets. And uh, so uh, a year that we thought could have been much worse uh, was was not as bad as, uh, as it ended. So I um, want to talk about a good friend of mine, um, uh, Jeff Newman, he retired this year, uh, March 31st. Um, Jeff, uh, um, with respect to staff, you may not be aware, but earlier this year, Jeff, uh, Senior Director of Programs for AOCS, he had retired after 25 years of service. Jeff has been a fixture of AOCS, uh, and uh, it's unfortunate we weren't able to gather in Portland uh, to thank him all in person, but we want to wish him a very happy retirement. And personally, uh, Jeff has been a very good friend to me, and, and uh, meetings with AOCS and Jeff were always uh, the very best, uh, highly organized, and uh, just a wonderful personality. So, um, and uh, before I share with you the results of the, the governing board election, um, we're going to step back a minute and uh, uh, just tell you how the progress works for the board. So uh, the board sets the direction of the organization. It provides oversight and uh, it ensures there's adequate resources, uh, namely money to make it run. So this is the construct of, of the governing board. There's a president that serves one year. There's a vice president that serves one year term, a secretary that serves a two year term and a treasurer that serves uh, two year terms. So the immediate past president also has one more year on the term on the board. So there's six to 11 members at large uh, that have up to a two year term. And uh, I'd like to recognize the members of the 2021 governing board whose terms have expired and thank them for their service uh, to AOCS and our organization. So our immediate past president is Eric Decker from the University of Massachusetts in Amherst and at-large members leaving uh, Doug Hayes from the University of Tennessee in Knoxville, 
Jill Mosier from the USDA uh, in Peoria, Illinois, and Tony Olenek uh, from Nascent Technologies Corporation. Uh, Eric, uh, Doug, Jill, and Tony, thank you so much for your dedication and, and sharing all your time and talent uh, with AOCS and the governing board. I personally, I uh, really enjoyed all my interactions with you and, uh, and I wish you all the best in the future. So the governing board election results, now that we can return to the election process and the results from the most recent election for the 2021-2022 governing board, it's the nomination and election committee of AOCS that is responsible for developing a slate of candidates for election to the governing board in accordance with the society's policies. The committee solicits and evaluates information submitted by applicants and interviews top candidates believed to be the best fit on an assessment of the current needs of the society. The committee then recommends a slate of candidates to the governing board for approval. In December 2020, the final slate of candidates for the 2021-2022 governing board were presented to the AOCS membership for approval by February 15th of this year. Candidates receiving more than 50% support from ballots cast will be installed as new members on the governing board. For the 2021 Governing Board elections, all candidates received overwhelming support. Members to be installed to the 2021-2022 Governing Board include, as president, Phil Kerr from Prairie Aquitecture, Aquitech, Darden Prairie, Missouri, as vice president, Sylvana Martini, Utah State University, Logan, Utah, and as treasurer, Grant Mitchell, Process Plus, LLC, Cincinnati, Ohio. New at-large members this year include Tom Brenna, University of Texas, Austin, Minnesota, Austin, Texas, the other Austin, I live in Austin, Minnesota, uh, Dharma Kadali at the University of Minnesota, St. Paul, Minnesota, Lindsay Liu, Goodard Chocolate, Burlingame, California, Roger Nehas, Kelsec in Kalamazoo, Michigan, Brian Ye, American Biodiesel, Walnut Creek, California, in Holiday Durham Zanetti at Neutralite Health Institute, Amway, Bueno Park, California. Members continue to serve during the 21-22 Governing Board. Uh, the Secretary Gerard Bailey, Procter & Gamble, Mason, Ohio, and at-large member Fabiola Dionisi, Society of Products Nestle, Nestle Research, Lausanne, Switzerland. Greg Hatfield from Bungie Limited, Oakville, Ontario, Canada. Nara Nara Wython, Egg Processing Incorporated, uh, Omaha, Nebraska. And Lars Ryman, Eurofin Scientific, Germantown, Tennessee. I want to thank all everyone who took part in this year's election process and encourage everyone to take an active role in the election process. This would be a good time to remind everyone that the application period for candidates interested in sitting on the 2022-2023 governing board is currently open. Applications must be received by Wednesday, June 30th, 2021, and you can find that information at AOCS.org. So it's been a great honor uh, to serve you all um, these past 12 months. Uh, it seems like only yesterday. Uh, this is a slide from uh, 1994. I was an honored student, and I'm a tall skinny guy in the upper right. I've gained a few pounds since then, but but this is my first meeting and uh, two of the people in this slide I've become lifelong friends with and another another friend that I met at the meeting has been a lifelong friend. And the lower right is Maria McCready's and uh, uh, she uh, studies DHA and, and infant uh, development and nutrition. And she's also the current president of ISFAL organization. So Maria is uh, really the top of her field and and one of the people that I've really enjoyed to know and, and follow over the years. So uh, Dr. Ralph Holman uh, in his laboratory one day said, Doug, you're going to join AOCS. And I'm like, sure. <laughs> I said, what is AOCS? And uh, Ralph Holman was a pioneer in the fatty acid world and uh, uh, was very grateful to him for introducing me to AOCS. AOCS is very friendly uh, to students and junior faculty and people starting out in their career. And it provided me with a lot of opportunities to meet uh, really uh, key people in the field, but also to present studies. And um, uh, so it was a big boon to my career and uh, in a heck of a lot of fun. So here's my AOCS family, uh, obviously Dr. Holman. The lady in the middle sporting a Remington 1100 semi-automatic shotgun is uh, 
friend Gloria Cook. So she takes care of the money at AOCS. So make sure you get your dues in on time. You don't want to visit from Gloria. <laughs> so uh, Dr. Lands, uh, uh, my my good close friend, Dr. Susan Rotz, and uh, Eileen Bailey Hall, and uh, and of course AOCS staff. Uh, there's 30 about 30 members of the AOCS staff that uh, are just amazing people. So, and I really want to thank uh, uh, Dr. Pat Donnelly, our CEO of AOCS this year. He did a, a fantastic job and had really strong leadership skills to, to weather this uh, pandemic. And, and of course, uh, Amy Garens uh, in the lower right of this slide, uh, distinct talents in, in all things IT and, and presentations and, and being uh, incredibly calm with uh, a lot of excited speakers and, and producing really a seamless uh, presentation was greatly appreciated. And lastly, I want to thank my family. Um, uh, you know, I, I didn't have any kids in 1994. We started our babies in 1998. So, um, so my children have been part of the AOCS family uh, in, in my evolution of AOCS for a number of years. So we live in Minnesota. So we do a lot with water and fishing, and it's my my daughter and son, Allie and, and uh, Andy, in the upper left-hand corner when they were kids. Uh, Allie's pretty good at catching walleyes. <laughs> so, and then the middle picture is them uh, when they've grown up. So they're, uh, they're uh, wonderful people. And of course, my parents, uh, upper right, uh, been a wonderful uh, strength to me and, and uh, just wonderful people that I get to interact with almost on a daily basis. And, and just before the start of this pandemic, we were blessed with our grandchild, first grandchild, Ava Bebas. So Ava is, uh, is uh, now just a bright, bubbly, wonderful little gal. And uh, during this past week, she liked to sit in with me and listen to a lot of the presentations for the annual meetings. So I don't know if she'll be a scientist, but uh, she certainly uh, learned a lot and enjoyed a lot. So um, so with that said, I thank my family. And, uh, and I'd like to introduce uh, another good friend of mine, uh, Dr. Phil Kerr. Um, he's the incoming president uh, for AOCS. And uh, Phil is somebody that I'm, I'm really grateful to know, uh, really a visionary, uh, a very intelligent individual, and, uh, and has uh, some great plans for AOCS. And, and Phil is currently the Chief Technology Officer of Prairie Aquatech. Uh, Prairie Aquatech discovers and develops and commercializes value-added solutions for global aquaculture. Prior to joining Prairie Aquatech in July of 2019, Phil was Senior Director of Grain and Food Science Research and Development of Indigo Agriculture. Phil has also served in multiple leadership roles with DuPont Agricultural Products, Sole LLC, and DuPont Nutrition and Health. His experience ranges from creating new ingredients with enhanced holistic quality attributes to the formation and management of strategic private public relationships that enable them and brought them to global commercial status. Phil serves um, as vice president of the Protein Highway Initiative, a network for facilitating cross-border collaborations for plant protein-based innovation and commercialization from the United U.S. Midwest Great Plains and Canadian Prairies. Phil first joined AOCS uh, Governing Board in 2016 and has served as member at large, secretary and vice president and, um, and now president. So uh, Phil, AOCS is incredibly lucky to have you at the helm and I appreciate uh, all your friendship and support over the past several years. So we'll turn the screen over to you. Well, thanks, Doug, for that kind uh, introduction. Um, more importantly, I want to thank you for the, the leadership that you provided in an incredibly challenging uh, uh, time. All of us know from either our families or our work situations or the, the situation at large in the, in the world, just how tough it's, it's been. But, um, you know, we're all tend to be kind of numbers folks and 
I can't reiter reiterate enough just to go through what we've done as a as a society and and a country and a, and a planet and to have only lost less than one percent of the the value the financial value of of AOCS during all of this is a is a testament to your leadership and the and the interaction you have with with Pat and the AOCS staff and and those of us that are on the governing board um, you know trying trying to help so so again uh, you know thanks a lot and uh, and I'll cherish. Uh, the, the mentoring and the friendship uh, long long after our terms are uh, over and, um, and really appreciate the opportunity that that taking on this new new role provides and hopefully I can I can do uh, half as good a job as uh, as you have done and if I if I can that'll be a fantastic job because you're just you're just terrific the other thing I want to do of course is uh, thank all the uh, the members of the society and the and the staff of the AOCS, you know, it, it would be easy to to back away from support, you know, the financial support of of travel and memberships and all of this kind of stuff in a in a global pandemic that has such a far-reaching impact on on almost everybody is is non-trivial. Uh, and so, thanks everybody for for your uh, your support in these in these times. You know, there's a there's a number of of themes, I think that that are important for for me as I describe how impactful AOCS was to me uh, throughout my career. Um, you know, I didn't come to AOCS as a, as an oil chemist per se. I was a more of a protein and a carbohydrate guy, but I realized very early on just how critical AOCS is in a continuum of things that all get tied together. And I want to show you some visual themes on. On that, while we also talk about some of the new things that are that are coming from uh, from the society that I think everybody um, will be excited about, uh, and it's all about the the incredible power that AOCS has in in creating that family, that community of technical uh, skills, deep science, broad science, and through that that unique sort of relationship, how impactful we can be at a time when, quite frankly, the world needs it more than it than it ever has. And so with that, I want to highlight a couple of things that, that we're going to be doing, um, you know, from a tech service uh, standpoint. Uh, uh, Doug uh, highlighted a lot of the, uh, the impacts that the staff has made in, in terms of, of additional learning experiences, uh, not only for our membership, for uh, adjacent organizations that share a lot of things in, in common. And one example of this is just uh, programs like the continuing ed uh, education program uh, between ourselves and the Society for Cosmetic Chemists and uh, the opportunity for lipids and proteins and other materials that we all work uh, with to come together in unique ways uh, for this very important in-use application is, is just one example of, of a number of things uh, that we have planned. The webinar series that was mentioned, uh, there'll be a number of them as well too. So we we really encourage all the membership to to not only look to see what's coming, uh, but you can also have an impact. You can influence uh, what's coming. Uh, please volunteer. You have expertise in a lot of these areas, and it's a way for you, those in your your organizations, those in your laboratories, those that you mentor. Uh, to to engage fully in, into the broader uh, you know world that uh, our science and technology uh, plays. You know, uh, Doug mentioned this um, the unique challenge that we had in in going into a virtual format for for last year's Plant Protein Science and Technology Forum, and and the team pulled it off. Well. This uh, fall is also going to be an interesting experiment because it's going to be our first hybrid event. We think the conditions in the world are going to allow uh, travel. Um, we're cautiously optimistic that, that that's going to help uh, create an, a, an environment for a hybrid event. And so uh, October 5 through 7 uh, at the Nick Barker Hotel in Chicago, we're going to hold our first hybrid uh, event all towards getting back to normal when we have a, a in-person event uh, at next year's annual meeting in, in Atlanta. So uh, we'd all be remiss to say, well, this is just a protein thing. It's not. 
uh, yes, protein is centric. And, and many of you know, this is a very, very unique time in the world uh, where um, technologies uh, for protein coming from, from plants are, are at an almost all time record uh, pace uh, for innovation and collaboration. And a forum like this can do nothing but, but uh, help accelerate that and, and help create an environment where, where a very rigorous uh, impactful science and technology can be brought together for the for the benefit of of everyone. But the the really cool thing about AOCS, from my perspective, because remember I was a kind of a protein and a carbohydrate guy, was just how important and impactful uh, lipids are in this area of of, of protein. So things like uh, lipid oxidation and structure and edible applications and processing, all of these things come together. And, and AOCS, in my view, is a very, very unique community uh, for that. And it's an opportunity for, for those that have interest in these areas to, um, to really uh, excel. Um, this slide I actually used at our at our uh, meeting uh, virtual meeting last year, and in, in some ways it's it's the same, but it's obviously the impact and the depth and the breadth was was broader than we could ever imagine. But it serves as I think a, a clarion bell for us to come together to to do things um, you know in a way that uh, is is really needed. You know, so about a year ago, eighteen months ago. Um, People were worried more about this thing called African swine fever and its impact on the Chinese uh, hog population and it, the fear of it spreading into other parts of swine production in the U.S. And little did we know what was really looming was was a, an even bigger issue. Uh, and and it, would, too, would have a massive impact on the global plant protein and oil oilseed industry, uh, not only in the last year, but in many, many years to come. Um, We've, we've all seen just sort of catastrophic changes in, in the way supply chains have been disrupted, uh, how, how restaurant and food service has to operate, uh, how even primary processing of, of crops and livestock that utilize crops have been impacted by, by all of this. And fundamentally, how we go about nourishing ourselves uh, uh, as a planet and, and countries and communities within that um, has been probably been forever changed. But the, the encouraging thing is that as a result of that, we've figured out ways to do things very differently. And uh, everything from how we conduct uh, annual meetings or our webinars to, to how we conduct uh, business in, in very, very unique ways is also starting to change. And, and so while it's been, a, it's been a very trying you know, year, year and a half, um, opportunities abound. And AOCS is a place where we can help uh, bring focus and, and solutions uh, to those very, very uh, serious problems that, that we all face. So we encourage that. And, and so an image that I like, um, you know, because of my, my uh, strong background in, in biotechnology and, and plant breeding and, and crop science and agronomy, um, you hear this, this notion all the time talked about, and whether it's an academic uh, setting, whether particularly in the industry, you hear this term of silos, you know, we're, we're working in silos. We don't, we don't share, we don't talk. Some of it is not intentional at all. Some of it is just lack of awareness. And it happens all the time. And, and so the beauty for me about AOCS is that it allows us to transition from this, this concept of siloed technology to the image on the right. Um, and that is, is that AOCS is kind of a unique environment to, to bring together adjacent technologies and the science and engineering associated with that in ways that is very, very impactful. And so I, I view the, uh, this, the uh, image on the right as an opportunity to, to take silos and turn them into elevators with AOCS as a connection. Uh, critical connection. And so there's no rhyme or reason for, for why certain divisions were put in, in, uh, in, in certain bins. They could all be mixed and matched. We've all seen the, the real power of when adjacencies are created and the divisions come together to, to put on joint uh, sessions and the like and how, how really rich and, and powerful the, the bringing together of all those technologies are. And so really encourage leadership uh, and membership within the society to, to consider how can the organization help foster stronger and stronger 
um, uh, divisions, but then also how do you foster the interactions between divisions that may not be happening to nearly the extent uh, that we could. So we look forward to, to uh, seeing that. Um, it's very clear. This is a unprecedented time of, of challenges. Um, you know, we, we mentioned that, um, you know, it could have been a very, very different ending to the financial aspects of the way the society is, is has to be run and, and grown. Uh, but for, we were fortunate in that regard. And one of the reasons why we're so fortunate is AOCS is, is incredibly diverse. And there's just a few images that we share here. We've all seen this, whether they're face-to-face, -face, uh, you know, speed mentoring uh, sessions, whether they're uh, interesting conversations occurring at the divisional level, whether you're having conversations around poster sessions or whether they're technical sessions at, at either real or, or, or virtual uh, meetings. All of these help illustrate the, the incredible power that we have and the diversity that we have within the organization. And, and yes, it's a diversity is about uh, gender and age and ethnicity and, and, and all of that. Uh, but it's also diversity in terms of, um, you know, experiences that you've had in your, in your career, the types of environments in which you work. Is it, is it an academic environment? Is it an industrial environment? Is it a government uh, environment? And even the stage of your career. The, the diversity with which we can draw upon is, is substantial. And it has a, a power to, to help us navigate through these very challenging times, I think, in a, in a very, very strong way. Um, as a governing board, we've realized that, that we have a group of individuals who have, have uh, invested tremendous amounts of their time in their career in, in helping the, the, the science and the technology improve. And these are the, the fellows. But whether they're AOCS fellows who we're going to reach out to and, and, and really help refine and enhance the strategic plan of the society, or whether it's, it's brand new employees with brand new, fresh uh, perspectives, uh, this diversity that we can tap into, we think, can, can really help uh, change the, uh, uh, the trajectory and, and make for uh, an even better society than, than we've had in the past and what we've had to go through the last couple of years. So it's going to take, it's going to take people uh, stepping up. You know, we need, we need everybody's uh, talent. We need everybody's uh, energy to, to be part of those uh, better, uh, better solutions. And, and in doing so, then, then we think that, that the future is, is bright. Uh, when people answer that clarion bell, uh, you know, we'll end up with, um, you know, meetings like, like next year's annual meeting in, in Atlanta. So we want you to save the date. Uh, we think uh, uh, that we're on a strong trajectory. That this will this will be live. Um, the governing board is is uh, going to be visiting the the venue later this year as we continue our strategic planning uh, efforts. Uh, and and we're going there because we anticipate that we're going to be able to to be there live. Um, but what we've learned over the last year is not going to go away. We have learned how we can approach and contact literally thousands and thousands of people who normally we wouldn't see at these meetings. And we can't lose sight of the fact of how positive and how impactful uh, that change in mindset has been. And so, so Pat and the, and the team and Amy has just been terrific in, in this and uh, many, many others you know, Julie and Ellen and others were tremendous help to, to me and, and co-chairs in, in sessions that I uh, that I co-chaired between the, the biotechnology and the protein and co-products division. Just just this meeting, we've learned so much and how we can do this. And, and are we done? No, there's still lots of things that need to be fixed about how we do this and how we do it efficiently and how we do it cost effectively. So that hopefully we can not only reach out to people that we've not been able to, um, we can also be financially successful in a in kind of a brave new uh, way to to go about doing it. It is it is important. We're we're not a for profit organization, uh, but we still need to be financially strong and and the opportunities to learn and grow and do things differently and, and better using this these new sets of communication uh, tools. I think will serve us very well in the future. So people who have interest in, in that aspect as well, hey, uh, we, we need your help and we need your, your passion and your, and your intellect to, to help make it all even more successful going forward. Um, 
I too, you, you, you can't believe the amount of work that it took to, to pull all this uh, stuff together, uh, larger than we've ever, ever dreamed possible. And so again, on behalf of the governing uh, board, we want to thank the, the, uh, the committee that helped organize it, the, the divisional leadership and the way it came together with, you know, tr uh, lots of joint sessions and that, that required even more uh, coordination and, and, and insight. Uh, to reach out and build those relationships, and we'll we'll build on them going going forward. So, uh, on the uh, behalf of the board, we want to uh, thank uh, Rick and all of the members that are shown on on the slide who really made this uh, a reality. And I just like to to second uh, Doug's uh, thoughts on on thanks. These are these are tremendous colleagues. These are members of our society that I encourage you to reach out to. I've learned so much in the time that I've been on the board with them, their perspectives. Um, some of them are gonna go off to, to other things. Uh, there's opportunities uh, to create for, for new business, opportunities to create to, to learn and grow through interactions with, with these folks and, and everybody else in the society. So, um, you know, roll up our sleeves um, and we need to stay in the game and I know we will. And in doing this uh, together, I, I, I'm very confident that we're going to do some very special things together uh, next year and in the years to come. And so with that, I'd like to stop and Pat and Doug and I would be happy to try to uh, answer any questions and field any comments that you may have about uh, this year's meeting or the things that we have on our, uh, on our plate to, to try to make AOCS even better than it's been. Uh, in the past for you. Welcome back, everybody. We're uh, we're here to answer some questions. So if you enter your questions in, I'll uh, read them to Doug and Phil. So while we're waiting, though, Doug, um, what do you see as um, the most you know the the most immediate challenge for AOCS? Um, I think uh, expanding membership, I think, is, is really one of the things that I see is uh, critical right now. So and, you know, uh, there's a lot of really positive directions moving ahead. And I think membership will come with it. But, uh, very exciting about uh, the expanse into protein and, and plant-based proteins. So, but, uh, but we need people. Yeah, so. Bill, what about what about you? What do you think the what do you, what do you see as the biggest immediate challenge for AOCS? Well, you know we have to we have to realize the the path going forward is still a little bit uncertain. Um, when are the rules <laughs> going to be known that we should all be you know following in terms of how can we sort of get back to uh, to what we experienced as, as uh, normal. Um, we, we all know that the pandemic is still very different in very uh, uh, different parts of the world. Uh, look at the contrast, you know, unfortunately the uh, events that are happening in, in India uh, and, and not in other places illustrate for a, an organization whose, whose intent is to be as globally diverse and globally connected as, um, as we need to be. Um, it, it's still uncertain as to when, when it's going to be, you know, safe and fair to, to do that. So navigating through this virtual hybrid live, uh, you know, timeline is, is, um, you know, it's going to be a challenge right. um, on the science and the technology side. I think, I think realizing just how dynamic and diverse uh, things have been, uh, you know, you 
just cannot believe the, the pace of innovation in the in this in the plant protein space. And and yet the thing for for someone who's been in that part of the industry for as long as I have, it's it's very gratifying to see that people are starting to learn that it's not just about proteins. If you can't think holistically and if you can't be innovative holistically and understand how proteins and lipids uh, and and metals and vitamins and everything interact, whether whether it's from a nutritional standpoint, whether it's a functional flavor sensory standpoint, then we're not really getting to the point that we need to. So I'm 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 uh, uh, challenged by how do we create these connections between the divisions uh, even better than than what we've done, and how sometimes it might take two or three or maybe even four divisions to, to really bring their talents together in order to solve some of the, you know, these are complex problems here. And instances are, you're talking about brand new crops or expansion of existing crops that have been regionally important, but not internationally important. And it takes a lot of technology to make that a reality, to scale. And we've got a bunch of members um, who understand that, who are working diligently to make that a, a reality. And I think that's that's a great opportunity for us at AOCS to provide that, um, you know, that environment where that can happen, where you can challenge uh, and yet learn. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm hopeful <laughs> that we can, we've shown we can do it reasonably well virtually. Uh, hybrid will be an interesting piece. And then of course, eventually live, but that, that melting pot, if you will, that is AOCS's strength is one I think we got to, we got to we got to think that uh, at the beginning rather than sort of an afterthought. Right. So that's a challenge well, for us. Uh, Phil, along that line, it was a, a questions are coming in now. And, and the first question um, it relates to what you're just talking about. So let me ask it. The, the grain elevator analogy is great. And I've learned that visiting other silos can be fun and rewarding. Yeah. What are the ideas that Phil might have for bringing the divisions closer together? Yeah, well, um, the the concept behind the the, the plant protein forum uh, really had a lot of these elements uh, in it, and you know we, it started out as not the plant protein forum, but the pulse protein forum, and and the pulse industry had done a a, a really good job of sort of saying, hey. Uh, muscle my way into into this landscape it was kind of um uh plant from a plant protein standpoint was was and in in some ways still dominated by by soybean you know which is along with palm the you know the number one and number two important oil oil seed crops uh for the industry and and us in that industry um so things like that where where you intentionally know that it's more than just a silo uh, for a total solution is is where I think personally the the true innovation is is going to come, and and so mechanically for the design of meetings and and things like this, I think this is where the divisional chair the tra the traditional role of a division and the and the leadership of a division has to start to think very consciously. Well, what are the adjacencies? You know, I I need to. I need to help shepherd the, the ongoing strength of the silo <laughs> because that is important. But then what are the things next to me that, that are the gaps? Because there's gaps in all of these things. It may, it may be supply chain, it may be genetics, it, it may be utilization and flavor and sensory. Uh, chances are it's all of those. And, and so only by reaching out I think that's the only way to do this is you realize that it takes, it takes a community of technologies. It takes a community of leaders of technology to, to make that a reality, particularly on a global, a global scale. Great. We've got lots of questions rolling in here. So let's, uh, let's see if we can get through them. We've got about 10 minutes left and a, a stack of questions. So the next question is in recent years, AOCS meetings presented uh, a constant increase in the presentation of works related to vegetable pro proteins and byproducts of the oil industry. Is there a possibility that this will generate new journals in the future? <laughs> well, um, 
Pat, you can answer that as well as I can, but uh, <laughs> we are uh, actively involved, actively involved in the creation of just that uh, forum for, for scientific communication. Uh, it's going to have to start with the, the uh, identification of a strong um, editor in chief and, and then an editorial board to, to help that editor in chief deal with the, the kind of complexity that we're talking about. And um, I, I guess the, the way to describe that would be to stay tuned. Um, it's coming. It's coming fast. Uh, we hope to make some real progress here over the, the early part of the summer, but we've already um, appreciated that kind of input. Uh, people have, have been in our ear about this for a while, and of course, we think that as well, too. Um, so stay, stay tuned, yeah. I guess, is the way to describe it. If I, if I could just, just add to that very briefly, uh, you know, j just to be clear, um, so we are in the middle of conducting a feasibility study right now and, and looking at that. And once all that data are together, um, we'll be able to make a decision on what's the right uh, move for AOCS. Um, next question, congratulations to the new governing board. This year, there was a lot of European participation in the annual meeting. Are you planning to organize an in-person event in Europe in the near future? Anyone want to take that? Great, great question. Great challenge. Um, you know, very candidly, AOCS, even though the, the name starts with American, <laughs> it, it doesn't represent who we, who we are, nor who do we aspire to be. And even beyond that, it has been very uh, North American centric. Uh, the Canadian, you know, uh, industry and the and the U.S. industries have have played a, a very important role in this. Uh, but also others. Uh, we have a very very strong historical relationship with organizations in Asia, like the Japanese Oil Chemist Society. Um, you know, the the meeting um, facilitation with this fall is a is another good example where lots of membership uh, there is, is European. Um, and I know on the plant protein side, we've had very active uh, leadership and participation uh, from European uh, scientists. So you just, you just know if the organization is going to be globally impactful, that it can't just be bouncing around a bunch of uh, U.S. or Canadian uh, cities, although a number of those places are terrific uh, places to hold meetings, regardless of whether you're European or, or not. But I could I could see that happening. Um, I think the world's got to settle down. Uh, travel's got to get the, the rules of travel uh, and immunization have to, to really settle down. Um, so there's no bad idea. We're in the no bad ideas mode, I guess, is, right. is, is what we should say. And so, yeah, we welcome all of that. If it'll help facilitate communication, if it'll help, you know, make the society stronger, uh, increase membership and all that, uh, those are all great yeah. tools for holding meetings in certain places around the world. Yep. So the next question, I think I'm going to have to answer this one. Uh, I think the meeting, virtual meeting went very well. However, I'm surprised it appears to be appears not to be much cheaper than a face-to-face -face meeting. What are some of the reasons for the high cost of a virtual meeting? Great, great question. Um, things have certainly changed over the time. Uh, virtual meetings are incredibly expensive to, to run and they don't actually almost as much as a, as a real, uh, as a meeting. Um, the platforms have, um, especially if you're doing live components, if you had all pre-records, uh, it'd be a different story. Um, the, some of the times it's the vendors, the platforms uh, have uh, evolved tremendously over the last 12 months. Uh, they also know that they've got a, a market and they're capitalizing on it. So the prices are increasing. Just to give you a ballpark, um, last June, we did a virtual annual meeting. Uh, it was almost, it was all pre-recorded, except we did a handful of live, which we sort of did on our own, like we're doing right here uh, outside of the platform. Um, this meeting, uh, we have, you know, twice the content and 100% and live, 10 times the cost. Um, so um, it, it's just very expensive. That's just reality. It's, it's the live stream that's really uh, one of the, the, the big uh, deciding factors. Okay, next question. Um, as you know, divisions are the pillars of AOCS. Uh, however, almost all the divisions see a downward trend in their membership number. 
At the same time, not every AOCS member is a division member. How can AOCS help? I think uh, you know, one of the strategies is encouraging uh, new members and current members to join a division and, uh, and to actually advertise uh, divisions more to, to current membership. So um, divisions are engines of, of scientific productivity and meetings. So I think that's one of the ways of, of doing that. And also for you know, individuals within the division to reach out to uh, people and, and encourage membership. I'm a member in multiple divisions and uh, I really enjoy um, you know, seeing all the information that, that transpires between the, the groups. Great. Yeah, as am I, Doug. Um, and it's really because of that, do they, Adjacency becomes uh, synergy, right? Um, and I think we've just got, uh, we have to find ways and whether it's, um, you know, financial or whether it's structural, this facilitation of the adjacency from division to, the, to division, um, just got to be where we differentiate ourselves from, from other environments, other communities like, like this. So, um, and next question relates to this too. And by the way, just to finish up on that, I think it was super team that asked that question. Um, th this is a priority for the governing board, uh, going forward this year. And the work plan is to really have a, a deep dive in divisions and membership, uh, um, in general. Um, so there's a lot of crossover between different divisions, but I found listening to presentations in different areas that there are a lot of things that I'm not familiar with. I would like to see say analysis for beginners and offer processing for beginners in return. What do you think about those ideas? It's, it's really an excellent idea. And the, you know, the webinar format that the OCS staff has put together are one of the great tools that can be used to facilitate that and libraries built uh, around knowledge on, on some of those more basic aspects. And then also at annual meetings, we typically have had, um, you know, not classes, but, but focus type groups on that that you could attend uh, as well. So uh, I've attended some on, on uh, processing and then also like oxidation that were really valuable early on in my career. Okay. Uh, we have two more questions. I think we can probably get to these. Um, is it possible to arrange leadership development program for division executives to help them improve their skills? Yeah, I would say absolutely. Yeah. Um, how, how we do it is going to take some thought. Uh, may have to find expertise even outside of the society to, to help with sort of basics of leadership development, uh, because some of that is technical leadership development. Some of it is just communicate with really diverse audiences that, um, mm -hmm. so soft skills and hard, hard skills uh, have to go hand in hand in my view. I think, I think um, you know, from my perspective, uh, hey, look, we're, we're happy to look at any, any program that, that's going to add value, that there's a, there's a core constituency that, that needs it, that says we want this, this is what we want value from. And that's what AOCS has to be about is creating value. So um, we're, we have to be looking for those opportunities all the time. Okay, last question. I think we have just time to get through this because this is a big one. The divisions are, were, are formed uh, a long time ago. And there are many overlaps, as we've, we've already discussed. Uh, maybe we should be rethinking the boundaries and form new focus areas so people will build teams with wider scopes and vision. What do you think about that? Yeah, um, great idea. Great, great concept. Um, you know, it, it, it literally is the, the grain elevator model. You know, I showed one, the image I showed was kind of linear, right? And we all know it's not that. It needs to be flexible. So you're talking almost a concept of, you know, almost like clusters of divisions, right? And when the world changes like it is right now, um, you need leadership within the division and um, across divisions to see those trends so that you can be, in my mind, flexible. You don't want, you know, you don't want a, a rigid kind of structure. So 
processing and and uh, protein and co-products you guys go get together with you know uh lipid oxidation and and you it you can't force fit it but i do think it takes this mindset of the leader the, the divisional leadership in my mind is really really critical and how do you develop those and but how do you hold leaders of divisions responsible for their portion of a bigger picture? Because I've seen it in my, my own career within AOCS. A lot of times we have very you know, strong leaders, but they're also very tunnel focused. And I just, I, I stay in my, I stay in my silo. And a lot of times that's when great things happen, but you also run the risk of missing out on things like, or, the revolution of innovation that's happening right now around plant proteins around the world. If you just look down within the silo. Right. So I'd like to, I'd like to see concepts of sort of major and that part of part of this for the audience is this, these are themes, if you will, that happen in strategic plans. And so part of the strategic planning process is okay. What are good, what are the things that, that the expertise in the society feels are going to be happening in the next, you know, five years, the next 10 years, and then what do we need to do uh, differently uh, or more of what we've done really well to, to be very, very relevant. And candidly, you know, we've missed on some of those things, in my view, as a society and, and as a governing board. Some huge things have happened with respect to to uh, partially hydrogenated oils being removed from the grass list and the first the advent and then the backlash in certain territories of the world about genetically modified crops. These are things that, that we, we need to be part of that conversation. And in some ways we weren't, just very candidly. So I, I hope this is an opportunity for us to realize that there's different ways to do it um, organize in such a way where we could be most Im impactful, but then be flexible enough to see when these, these big things are, are coming that we could play a very positive role in that we can, we can be there to take advantage of it. So well, there, there is a, there is a theme here in these questions that are coming out, right? We have a theme that, uh, concern about, uh, membership numbers going down, uh, concern that, um, uh, gee, we like this uh, uh, collaboration, but we may need a little help in the basics so we can better collaborate. Uh, another theme about leadership and another theme, this last one, is really fundamentally asking uh, about the model. You know, this was from a long time ago. Should, just because we had it that way, is that the way we should be doing it? They're great questions. And I think they're all come together. I think we need to address those collectively um, um, to, to explore uh, divisions. Anyway, Doug, did you have any final comments yeah, to take us out? Would uh, um, I would just encourage divisions to think about how to communicate with each other more. Um, I'm in a local Kiwanis club, and every week we have a speaker, and it's that little activity uh, that really keeps people connected and questions brewing. And with the tools that we've learned over the past year, uh, Zoom right. meetings or, or Teams meetings, uh, really makes it pretty easy to throw that all together. So, um, so that may be one of the challenges for divisions is just to uh, just to talk more on a regular basis, not just uh, at a random meeting. So uh, Great. that would be my two, two cents. Well, we, we ran a little long. I apologize. Uh, any any last uh, comments, Doug? No, uh, thanks everybody uh, for attending and, and uh, really excited for the, the reemergence of post-pandemic AOCS uh, this year. So thanks for, uh, thanks for all hanging with us and uh, look forward to seeing you all in person. Yeah. Great. Phil, any, anything to take us out? Any comments? Uh, just more of the same. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everybody uh, in a very, very challenging time. And look forward to, as the old saying goes, grabbing a glove and getting in the game again. And uh, so we look forward to this fall and, uh, and next year. And, and we need everybody's energy and passion. And we know we'll get it. But uh, please be engaged. Get, get active reach out, create relationships and collaborations that you'll, you'll be so, so much better for it is, is um, I think everybody has had those examples. So let's go make some more. Great. With that, thank you all. Thank you everyone for, for being here today and, and being with us at the meeting uh, this last two weeks. And uh, we look forward to seeing you all in Atlanta next year.
Bye-bye.